Hello, this is Rick from Mathex, and today we're going to be doing the number 10 from the individual round of the 2019 ARML National Tournament. So, this problem is quite difficult, as expected for the number 10 for the individual round of the ARML National Tournament. However, it's not impossible, and as I'm about to show you, if you have a solid understanding of trigonometric functions, you should be able to do this problem with quite ease. So without further ado, let's just get into this problem. Compute the value of sine 6 degrees times sine 12 degrees times sine 24 degrees times sine 42 degrees plus sine 12 degrees times sine 24 degrees times sine 42 degrees. So first off, you should notice that the product of these three values, sine 12 degrees times sine 24 degrees times sine 42 degrees, shows up in both of these terms. This allows us to factor this equation into sine 12 degrees sine 24 degrees times sine 42 degrees times, in parentheses, sine 6 degrees plus 1. So we've changed our initial expression into this expression. And although it doesn't seem that much better, we can actually do something to this equation that will make the entire thing easier to deal with. So in this expression, we have four trigonometric terms and we have one constant term. Typically, we would like to keep everything in constant term. However, since that's not possible, we would like to keep all the terms so that we're able to connect them to one another. So this motivates us to change our already existing one to sine 90. So I'm about to rewrite this equation, but I'm going to replace one with sine 90 instead. So pretty much here, I've rewritten the entire expression once again. However, I've converted the initial one into sine 90 degrees. It still, it still maintains the same value. It's just we're going to have sine 90 degrees instead of one. Now this is beneficial because this allows us to use sum to product on sine 6 and sine 90. And this allows us to convert the sum of these two trigonometric functions into a product of two trigonometric functions, which we can connect with the rest of the expression. So if we use sine, sum to product on these two terms, we get 2 sine 6 plus 90 over 2, so 48, cos 90 minus 6 over 2, so 84 by 2, 42. And of course, we also have the previous constant before that, the sine 12 times sine 24 times sine 42. I'll just copy and paste that so I don't have to rewrite everything again. Okay, so now we've turned our previous sum into a product. And now it's at this point things start to look a little better because now we can actually like order these terms. I'm just going to add the parentheses here just for organization. So now everything's kind of ordered with respect to one another. 
Now, we see a cos 42 here, we see a sine 42 here, and we see a 2 here. So just seeing these three terms should motivate you to use the double angle formula. So we can rearrange the terms because now we're just multiplying everything together using the like commutative property of multiplication. And then we can just rewrite this entire equation as sine 12 degrees times sine 24 degrees times sine 48 degrees times 2 sine 42 degrees cos 42 degrees now using using the double angle formula we can close this down into sine of 84 degrees So now we pretty much have our product as, once again, the same initial, um, actually no, not the same initial. We have sine 48 times sine 24 times sine 12 times sine 84 degrees. So I'm going to move this down so we, that it can be all on the same line. And we basically converted our previous step into this step just by using double angle formula. Nothing too tricky. So now we converted our initial sum here into the product of four different sine terms. So from this point, we can kind of just rearrange and see if we can get any nice values, like any nice signs that we can convert back to val values to compute for the value of this original expression. So just looking at this thing, we see 12, 24, 48, and 84. So what are some nice sine values that we would like to convert our current sine values into? Some nice sine values are 0, 30, 60, and 90. Looking with the 12 and the 48, 12 plus 48 is 60. So we should try to group these two together. Similarly, 24, um, 84 minus 24 is 60. So we should group these two together. So we just rearrange this expression into sine 12 degrees times sine 48 degrees times sine 24 degrees times sine 84 degrees. So now we've grouped the terms together. Now all we need to do is use the defactorization formula or basically the opposite the opposite step in sum to product, product to sum, to basically factor these out into their nice valued terms. So just recalling our product to sum formula for sine, sine x times sine y, we can factor this out into one half cos 48 minus 12, 36, minus cos 48 plus 12, 60. Similarly, we can use the same product to sum identity to defactor sine 24 times sine 84. So once again, we write 1 half times cos 
84 minus 24, 60, minus 84 plus 24, 108, cost 108. And, I don't know, keep the degrees. Degrees versus radians makes a very important difference here, so you don't need to write in all steps, but just keep track of it throughout the problem. See, like, I forgot it here a couple times. But it's a good thing to keep in mind. So now we've converted our initial expression to more nicest terms. However, we can actually simplify this cos 18 term a little further to make the overall equation a little easier to deal with. Some people might know exactly what to do with cos 18, but I'm just going to rewrite it in a simpler way for myself. So we know that cos 18 is pretty much the same thing as negative cos 72. And we know this because of the reduction formula for co cosines. Negative cos 17, of course, is simply negative sine 18. So I'll just rewrite this entire expression up here, uh, just plugging in negative sine 18 at 4 cos 108. So doing that, we get 1, one half times cos 36 degrees minus cos 60 degrees times 1 half times cos 60 degrees minus minus sine 18 degrees. So I can I'll just write that as sine plus sine 18 degrees. So we can group the one halves one halves together like put them all at the beginning, giving us one-fourth here. And then cos 36, well, cos 36 isn't one of like the more common trig values. However, if you're going for ARML or other competitive maths, you should kind of remember the cosines and sines for values of 18, 36, 54, 72. So cos, cos 36 is just another value, you just need to know. It's just simply root 5 plus 1 over 4. Cos 60 you definitely should know. If you're doing a trig, if you're doing any sort of trig, you have to know cos 60. These are the more common values you have to know, even getting by school math. Cos 60 is just 1 half. And then in our second equation, cos 60, once again, is 1 half plus sine 18 is 5, root 5 minus 1. Root 5 minus 1 over 4. So simplifying a bit further, we get 1 fourth times root 5 minus 1 over 4 plus root 5 plus 1 over 4. And I just got this, this expression just by like adding the fractions in the previous step. Just add the fractions, you're going to get this. And then from here, we can use we get one fourth once again. We use difference of squares to multiply the numerators with each other. So root five minus one times root five plus one, which will give us five minus one, which is four, by four times four, 16. Multiply through, we get one by 16. One by 16 is the answer to all of our previous steps. 
And since we didn't modify the equation anyway, 116 is actually the answer to the question itself. This is the value that this ugly expression has. So even though it was not really, like it wasn't a short, there, it wasn't a short problem. Like there were no like really simple or nice tricks that like turn this into, that like reduce this problem to dust. At the same time, it wasn't impossible. Like all I did here was I just used sum to product. And if you do a decent amount of trig practice, some of this stuff should just come to you naturally. I've been working from a, just working from a book, like one of my parents had, work preparing for their JE entrance exams. Lots of these problems show up. So if you're ever having trouble on trig problems, I would recommend playing Trigonometry by S.L. Looney. The book itself isn't very big. It only has 500 pages, but it has a lot of good, high quality trigonometry problems, which you will probably find helpful and will probably build a lot of problem solving experience and motivation. But once again, to solve this problem, all I used was simple sum to product, product to sum. And then I just got a little creative, like creative thinking about one to sine 90. However, nothing was really too big. This just shows that to clear, sometimes to clear like literally the hardest competition level problem, you just need a solid understanding of the concept, which can only be obtained by doing more and more practice. So maybe a thing to keep in mind before prepping for your next big exam, maybe competition, AMC 12, AMC 10, just go over the basic stuff and make sure you know that to such an extent that even scary problems like this will mess you up due to your conceptual understanding. Yeah.